Sound check. Check mic one, two. I guess we're live now. Ladies and gentlemen, nurses all over the world, welcome to Connetics College. First of all, we'd like to thank Connetics for this golden opportunity for, uh, uh, for allowing 9.09er to talk about IELTS, OET, PTE, and TOEFL. Every Monday, Connetics College features their partner NCLEX and IELTS review centers. For NCLEX, there's Aspire RN and IPASS. For IELTS, OET, PTE, and TOEFL, there's Swoosh and 9.09er. So 9.09er is in charge every fourth Monday of the month. Last December, we featured Sir Marlone to talk about IELTS and TOEFL writing. But for tonight, our guest is none other than Sir Brian Martin Shawson, our lecturer who got the perfect 9.0 overall band score in the IELTS, 9 in listening, 9 in reading, 9 in writing, and 9 in speaking. In the same way, Sir Brian took PTE. So for Pearson Test of English, he got perfect 90 over 90 overall band score, 90 over 90 in listening, 90 over 90 in reading, 90 over 90 in writing, and 90 over 90 in speaking. For tonight, we're going to give a free subscription to our IELTS or OET Platinum package. All you have to do is to tag as many friends as you can. At the same time, be participative in the comment section. For tonight, we're going to focus on IELTS and PTE writing. Just to give you a brief overview. Last year, CGFNS announced that apart from IELTS, there are other English examinations that you can now use to apply for your visa screen. So here comes OET, PTE, and TOEFL. It's just that Sir Brian and I decided to focus on IELTS and PTE because they are the most popular English examinations worldwide. Especially here in the Philippines, IELTS and PTE are available, or the IELTS and PTE exams are available every single day in Metro Manila and Metro Cebu. In the same way, IELTS is available in 30 key cities nationwide. Now, I'll send the link to various group chats and I'll ask Sir Brian to initially greet our audience and to talk about the main differences between IELTS writing and PTE writing. If ever there are similarities, Sir Brian is also going to focus on them. Let's hear it from Sir Brian. Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for joining our live session here at Kinetics College. And I encourage everyone to participate. You can message us and send us your comments so that we can respond to your questions just in case you have any clarifications about anything that we're going to discuss for tonight. Just uh, send us your messages and we'll be more than happy to answer all of your questions. Okay, so I would like to first discuss the differences between the IELTS and the PTE. These are two distinctly different examinations because IELTS is actually more of a general examination, whereas the Pearson Test of English is actually also a general test in, in the same sense. However, it is a computer-administered and computer-marked exam. IELTS, on the other hand, is going to be marked by human raters. So there's human intervention when you're taking the IELTS. Now, IELTS being a general examination, and for you guys who are taking the IELTS academic module, will be composed of two parts, writing task one and writing task two. Writing task one academic is your statistical report writing exam or process report writing examination in which you're going to be provided charts or figures or diagrams. And you have to present your description of these charts that you're going to see in the test. You have to write a minimum of 150 words and um, make sure that, that you accomplish everything within 20 minutes. Now, writing task two is going to be an essay writing component in which you're supposed to write an essay in response to a particular point of view, argument, or problem. You're supposed to write a minimum of 250 words for IELTS writing task two, and you're recommended to finish this within 40 minutes. If you're going to compare that to the PTE, there are also two tasks in PTE writing, but they're distinctly different from IELTS, at least I, th I think partly, because the first task in your PTE writing is actually summarized written text. And this component is actually when you will be presented a long passage 
a lengthy passage and you're supposed to summarize that passage writing only five to 75 words. You have a total only of 10 minutes to accomplish this task. So there's really so much time pressure when you're working on the PTE. But the difference is you don't really have to think of what you're going to write because everything is already there in the passage. All you need to do is to just summarize everything that you have read in that passage. Now, perhaps you will have one or two uh, questions for summarized written text. And the next one is actually very close to the IELTS, which is your write essay. Write essay, interestingly, has the same format as that of the IELTS. The question types are also very identical. And it is very similar in the sense that you're supposed to also write an essay. Almost the same number of words as that of the IELTS for 200 to 300 words. So in so far as there are differences in these two exams, there are also some overlaps or some similarities between these two tests. So if you take one and prepare for one, you can probably apply some of the skills that you have learned for one examination to the other, especially I understand some people here are taking, say, for example, the PT after the IELTS or they've changed their minds. They want to take a different examination. Uh, rest assured that what you have learned for essay writing for IELTS might also be applicable for PTE writing, particularly for the write essay component. All right, so now uh, it's time for me to, um, uh, Sir Irvin, are we done already <laughs> sharing the links? I'm going to turn you over to Sir Irvin now uh, for him to discuss some specific details about the IELTS. Thank you for that, Sir Brian. Now, I want everyone to know that IELTS, OET, PTE, TOEFL, all four of them are accepted when you apply for USA Visa Screen. It's just that for tonight, we are focusing on IELTS and PTE writing because of the similarities. Yes, OET as an examination is also accepted when you apply for US Visa Screen. It's just that the format is totally different from that of IELTS and PTE. Why? IELTS writing task 2, there is essay writing. You also heard Sir Brian mention earlier that for PTE, there is a component where you are asked to come up with an essay. But for OET writing, it's an entirely different story. Why? Because for OET writing, you will be asked to write a referral letter. So sometimes you endorse one patient to a fellow healthcare professional. In essence, you're not going to write your essay you're not going to give your opinion. You don't agree or disagree with something. You don't talk about the advantages and disadvantages, but you are communicating to a fellow healthcare practitioner. I want everyone to know that in IELTS and PTE, you are given a simple topic, a simple question, and based on this, you're supposed to write around 250 words. I'll give you a perfect example. This is a typical question in IELTS and PTE writing. Some prefer to stay at home while there are people who would rather go abroad to earn a living. Discuss both, uh, both views and give your opinion. But you're not going to encounter something like that in OET writing. When OET became popular as an English examination, at first I was a bit overwhelmed with the writing case notes because you are usually presented up to two pages of data pertaining to the patient's diagnosis, background, and so on. Now, here's the catch. If you're presented with a lot of details, you as the healthcare practitioner are going to eliminate the irrelevant details and come up with a letter which is shorter than that of IELTS and PTE, only 180 to 200 words. But for IELTS, you're presented with a simple topic, a short question, and you are on your own to expound and write up to 250 words. Now, before we proceed, I'd like everyone to know that this show is obviously brought to us by Kinetics, one of the largest companies helping nurses going to the United States of America. In the event that you have plans of going to America, but no one is assisting you in the process, what we want you to do is to visit cusa.link slash niner. All that you have to do is to upload your resume or present your curriculum vitae, rest assured there are people from Connetics who will contact you for and schedule you for interview or consultation. So let's go back to what we were talking about. Let's compare IELTS and PTE. Now, 
In IELTS, there are four criteria that examiners use in assessing your performance. Number one, there's task response. Number two, coherence and cohesion. Number three, lexical resource. And number four, grammatical range and accuracy. We're going to talk about the four of them one by one, but I, for one, took the IELTS twice. One academic module, one general training module, one with IDP, and one with the British Council. But Sir Brian right here took two English examinations, one IELTS and one PTE. Now let's ask Sir Brian, are the four criteria, the ones assessed in IELTS writing, also the same as the four criteria in PTE writing? Okay, that's a very interesting question, Sir Irvin. And I would like to inform everyone that although there are overlaps in the structure of the examination, the grading might be a little bit different for the PTE because the marks are awarded by the computer. So there is actually a very complex, sophisticated algorithm that is involved in grading you for the writing component of the test since there's no human rater here. So yes, you will be graded for grammar. You will also be graded based on your response. You will also be graded based on your vocabulary and also your grammar, but there are a lot of other things that will be graded in the test. Say, for example, the form of your writing. So say, for example, if you're not able to comply with the minimum standards or the minimum number of words and uh, you're not writing an essay format, say, for example, you wrote only one entire paragraph, you didn't split that into several paragraphs that can impact your score as well because the computer will be grading you lower. Uh, for those um, things, okay, for not following the instructions or perhaps not writing an essay in the right format. And uh, apart from all of those that you have mentioned, sir, uh, there are plenty of other components like your written discourse that will be assessed in um, PTE writing. And written discourse actually pertains to how organized your writing is, how it flows naturally, how the message is conveyed and understood by the computer, not your reader, but by the computer generally, or comprehended by the uh, AI system. So um, it's, a little bit more complicated and uh, in a PTE, it's not like if you do something, it's going to impact just one component and that's going to uh, give you a grade for one component because there are a lot of compl complex um, connections that will be assessed in your writing component simply because it is graded by a computer. Thank you for that, Sir Brian. A lot of people ask us, so sir, which one do you recommend? Is it IELTS? <laughs> OET, PTE, or TOEFL. We want everyone to know that all of these high-stakes English examinations are available in the market. Now, we have one examination to recommend because there are more test dates, there are more examination venues, but what about the level of difficulty? Mm -hmm. Some people are saying that one examination is easier to, is easier to pass than the other. But what 9.09er believes in is like this. If you are prepared... You are going to pass your English examination regardless of the test, regardless of the location and mm -hmm. the test venue. However, if you are not prepared, obviously, you're going to find it difficult to pass any of these high-stakes English examinations. Now, I saw here a question coming from Hamza al Hajj, which states accept PTE. We also want the others to use the comment section because like what we've mentioned earlier, we are awarding a free IELTS or OET Platinum Review Package to the most active commenter. How do you qualify for that? Tag as many friends as you can or use the comment section and interact with us. We want everyone to know that this is not a monologue. This is supposed to be an interactive discussion. Yes, this will be available on the Facebook page of Connectics even after the Facebook Live session. However, we want to remind you guys, the main difference when you watch the recorded version versus attending the live and interactive version, you cannot ask us questions anymore when you watch the recorded version. But during the live and interactive portion like this one, whatever you ask, we are here to respond. So let's take a look at this comment from Hamza al Hajj, which states, accept PTE. I want you guys to know that when CGFNS announced that now PTE is acceptable in the United States, initially, back then in August of 2022, only 15 states accepted PTE. But as time went by, more and more state boards of nursing are now accepting 
PTE. What, what is it that we want everyone to know? There will come a time that almost all of the states in the United States of America will accept PTE as it is gaining recognition from more state BONs. Now, what we need you to do is to communicate with Connetics. Identify which particular state in the U.S. you want to go to. And then you ask Connetics, does this state accept IELTS or require OET or accept PTE or prefer TOEFL? Because from there, it's easier for you to decide which English examination is appropriate for you. Why? There are certain states that accept all of these examinations. At the same time, there are certain states that prefer that you take this examination over the others. So instead of choosing which English examination you think is easier or more difficult to pass, what we would rather that you do is to pick a state first. If the state tells you take any of these, that's when you consider IELTS or PTE. But if the state tells you this is what we strictly require, then it will save you a lot of time thinking and deciding which examination is best for you. Let's take a look at the other comments. Mohammed Wakas said, USA, yes, this Facebook Live session is sponsored by Kinetics College as this is on the Facebook page. Uh, Facebook page of Connetics. But what we want you guys to know, even if you're targeting other destinations, you will benefit from this live discussion. But if you're interested to go to the United States and no one is assisting you yet, Connetics is here and ready to help you out. Once again, I'll share with you the link. That's cusa.link slash niner. All you have to do is to upload your profile, uh, make a profile, upload your resume, your curriculum vitae, and expect to receive an email or a communication from the Connetics representatives. I've been dealing with Connetics for the longest time and one thing's for sure, the organization is structured and very responsive. No wonder it's recognized as one of the biggest, not just companies in the nursing industry, but top 1,000 in the United States of America. So congratulations to the entire team of Connetics. What other comments do we have here? Uh, Sasa Oras tagged Giselle, thank you for that. Abibatu Abdulai. I learned most people pass OET than IELTS. It's actually like this. You, what you have to understand is that there are certain countries which require higher grades as compared to the others. But in the case of the United States, USA does not require you to get a specific grade in listening, reading, and writing. But USA needs you to get a 7 in speaking and 6.5 overall band score. But for OET, you need a minimum grade for listening, reading, writing, and speaking. Which means to say, there is a mounting pressure if you are taking OET going to the United States. Because you have to do well in all four subtests. As compared to the IELTS, you just have to focus on speaking and overall band score. And whatever grade you get for listening, reading, and writing, you can go to the United States of America. That's why I said it's important to consider your destination. There are certain countries where OET might be preferred, but if you're going to the United States, it might be more practical to consider IELTS or PTE. Let's take a look at the other comments. Akosua Amoakoa Achiampong is from Ghana. Hello to you in Ghana. If I'm not mistaken, it's afternoon in Ghana right now. In the Philippines, it's 8 p.m., but in Africa, most likely, uh, it could be uh, early afternoon. Let's take a look at the comment of Reina. And we'd like to encourage the 65 live viewers to tag as many friends as you can because Sir Brian and I do not do this every day. During the time of COVID pandemic, that was when we were super active on Facebook, conducting Facebook live sessions up to three times a week. But now that the pandemic is in control, under control, more and more people are looking to uh, looking for face-to-face -face classes. That's why 9.09er is so happy to inform the people of the Republic of the Philippines we are reopening up to 25 branches for face-to-face -face for IELTS, OET, PTE, and TOEFL. Who knows, we might be able to ask the other franchisees to say yes and reopen more branches because our target by mid of 2023 
face-to-face -face coaching available in 34 locations nationwide. Yes, we are from the Philippines, but it doesn't mean that we only accept Filipinos because Kinetics is also sending us non-Filipinos for IELTS review. We'd like to thank Kinetics for playing a big role because right now we have online reviewees from 124 countries coming from six continents worldwide. Because we're operational 24-7, we offer one-on-one -on -one coaching all throughout the day. If ever you are interested in the free review offered by Kinetics, all you have to do is to email Miss Jennifer. She will endorse you to the partner review centers of Kinetics. There's 9.09er and Swoosh. And from there, you're able to prepare for your examination without spending a single centavo. Not every company offers this kind of benefit. So please maximize this offer from Connetics, one of the most generous organizations that we know. Now, speaking of, here's a question from Reina. I have a visa screen before and got expired. Will I do another English proficiency exam to renew a visa screen? The answer is, if your English exam is expired, you need to take another English examination. But let me tell you, whether it's IELTS, OET, PT, and TOEFL, all four of them have the same validity. Results are good for two years. Thank you, Ms. Anna Cruz of TCR Customer Assistance Service. Ms. Anna Cruz is one of the uh, admin of Lefora Nursing Group to the United States of America. At the same time, a former reviewee of 9.09 or eight years ago in 2015. Right now, she's living the dream as a registered nurse and a travel nurse for that matter in New York, USA. Okay, Abibato Abdullah said it's afternoon in Ghana. Good afternoon to our friends from Ghana. Chenny Yi, do you need to renew IELTS? It's not more of renewing if you were able to apply for your visa within two years before it expires. If it expires and you have not made a single step in your visa application, that's when you are required to take another test. But the only way to renew is to take another exam because you cannot extend the validity of an examination that you have taken two years ago. Fuzia Shama, I'm about to start procedure with Kinetics. When should I have to give PTE exam? Now, let's ask Sir Brian, when do you think it's best <laughs> to take the examination and how many months do we recommend for candidates to prepare for these high-stakes English tests? Okay, thank you. That's a very good question because a lot of people would want to know how long they need to prepare for the PTE. So my suggestion is you start as soon as possible with your preparation so that you can take the examination in the soonest possible time and get your application moving. It is very important that you take your English examination for your papers to move because without your English test, there will be no movement in your application procedure. So the first step all the time is to make sure that you have an English test and you have your um, NCLEX. So if you have those two uh, different requirements, your application will get moving. But when it comes to preparation, we're talking about how long you should prepare for the PTE. Normally, it will take one to two months. This is actually just a ballpark figure. I'm actually not um, generalizing here because it will be very different depending on different factors. The first one is how dedicated are you in your training program or your review program? Because if you're just attending, say, for example, once every month, <laughs> How do you expect to progress in your test preparation with just a single attendance in a month? So if you're doing it regularly, most of the time you are ready to take the examination in one to two months. For PTE, this is different for the IELTS. I'll ask Sir Irvin to talk about that later. But for PTE, normally it's just one to two months of preparation if you're preparing full-time. Another one is your current language level. If your English is not so strong, and PTE is actually very sensitive to your language skills, so if your communication skills in English aren't really advanced, then you will probably need to take more time preparing for the test, maybe two months or even three months sometimes if your English is not so strong. And number three, what's your target score? For the PTE, actually, the target score is right about 55. So this is actually not necessarily an easy grade to hit in the test. So you want to make sure that when you're practicing, you're already getting that score for 
your different components of the examination. Once you have actually been able to reach all of those, maybe when in your practice tests, when you're assessing yourself, when you're consulting with your coaches, then you will know that you're prepared to pass. And here at 9.09er, we give recommendations to our students. We provide advice and feedback whenever you, you have coaching sessions so that you will know whether you are test ready or you need more preparation. Um, Sir Irvin, how about for IELTS? Will it be the same for um, the preparation time? Is it also one to two months on average? Thank you for discussing this, Sir Brian. Well, Sir Brian right here has taken both IELTS and PTE. And he knows for a fact that in PTE, there is no human intervention. Why? You are not talking to an interviewer, but you talk to a computer. So... Mm -hmm. The computer is always accurate because it is artificial intelligence that assesses your performance. In the IELTS, however, there is human intervention because your output is not graded by a computer, but your output is graded by a human being. Now, it's interesting for us to know what grade you need in the examination because other destinations require a specific score for nurses in writing. I'll give you a case in point. If you're going to the United Kingdom, you need a relatively high score in IELTS writing, and that is 6.5. So this is when we recommend you to allot two to three months of preparation. If you're targeting New Zealand, last year, the good news is New Zealand Nursing Council announced that now they're more flexible because from 7, they lowered down the requirement to 6.5. So what does 9.09er recommend? Two to three months of preparation. Australia remains to be the country that strictly requires seven in writing. So if you are not an average Joe, we recommend you to allot more than three months of preparation. Now here's the Republic of Ireland, which I should say is one of the most flexible. Because before, they strictly required a grade per component, but now... You just have to get three sevens and one 6.5. So that 6.5 might actually come from any subtest. So for Ireland, it's two to three months. But going back to what we've always emphasized earlier, USA does not require a specific grade in writing. That's why if you're going to America, one to two months of preparation will do. Provided that you are doing good in the speaking component. But now you're going to ask us, so why not talk about speaking if it's the most important? Well, Kinetics is very clear. So Kinetics made sure that Swoosh is able to discuss two subtests. So listening and speaking, care of Swoosh English. Reading and writing, care of 9.09er. So every second Monday of the month, it's Swoosh that talks about listening and speaking. Every fourth Monday of the month, and now it's the fourth Monday of the month, it's the turn of 9.09er to talk about reading and writing. Swoosh might want to give you other uh, tips, test-taking strategies in the speaking component, but 9.09er is limited to discussing IELTS and uh, PTE, reading and writing, for that matter, okay? Now, let's take a look at the other questions of our live attendees. Thank you for this opportunity. Watching from Saudi Arabia. Hello to Yara, Princess El Jendi. Let's move on to the next comment. Carlo Rey Santos. Hi, Sir Brian and Sir Irvin. I just recently passed my NCLEX examination. Wow. Congratulations to you, Carlo Rey Santos. But I just wanted to ask if you have 9.09er here in Nueva Ecija. Thanks for asking this question because I remembered... Ms. Lashana asking us to mention which particular cities now that 9.09er is offering face-to-face -face coaching. Let's begin with Metro Manila. And I'm certain that Sir Brian is familiar with our branches in Metro Manila. So Sir Brian, let's enumerate the 25 locations where 9.09er is offering face-to-face -face coaching. Let's begin with Manila, Sir Brian. There's... We have the main branch in Manila, and we also have Niner um, Quezon City, and we also have Niner Makati in NCR. Soon, we will be opening Niner Marikina as well. So um, uh, just uh, watch out for our opening for Niner Marikina. And 9.09er makes sure that we are easily 
uh, uh, acts, uh, we are readily available to serve the needs of our clients. That's why here are the branches that are going to reopen for, uh, for Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao. For Northern Luzon, there's Malolos, Bulacan. San Fernando, Pampanga, Cabanatuan, Nueva Ecija, the one that was asked by our live attendee, Cabanatuan branch will reopen this March. There's Kawayan Isabela, Tugigaraw, Cagayan Valley, Baguio in Cordillera Administrative Region, Dagupan, Pangasinan, Tarlac City in Tarlac. So, so far, here are the locations that are going to reopen in northern Luzon. Now, let's go down south. South Luzon. There's Imus Cavite, there's Calamba Laguna, San Pablo Laguna, Lipa Batangas, then Lucena Quezon Province, Legaspi Albay. Let's move on to the Visayas. Iloilo City, Cebu City, Tacloban City, Bacolod City. Moving down south to Mindanao, there's Davao City, Cagayan de Oro, General Santos City, Zamboanga City, Bukid, uh, no, not Bukidnon. It's Iligan Lanao del Norte and Butuan Agusan del Norte. By the time we have reopened all of these, it's possible for us to revive 25 branches. They existed even before COVID, but because of the pandemic, we were forced to temporarily close. Sir Bri, can you please take over for us while there's <laughs> yeah. garbage collecting? Sure. <laughs> okay, so I forgot to mention as well Niner Alabang which is um, already currently operating. So if you want to enroll, you can actually go to their branch as well. And uh, we have other branches that we are planning to reopen by March. So we have in the pipeline, Cabanatuan, Pampanga, Jensan, and Isabela. And in April or May, probably we'll be reopening Marikina, Tarlac, Alamba, Bacolod, and San Pablo. So we are bringing 9.09 or closer to you. So just in case you want to have face-to-face -face or in-person review sessions, we are bringing our center closer to where you are. But our online review program is still ongoing. So um, it's actually going to be a mainstay in our business. And it's going to be a part of our uh, services for life. So uh, just in case you're enrolled in the branches, you can also attend in our online review courses. You can access our online dashboard. You can review through our mobile application. And you can also prepare for your English examinations through coaching sessions that you can book online. So we have all of those offerings available for everyone who enrolls at 9.09 or so. Again, if you want to enroll and avail the free review that is being offered by Connetics, uh, just don't forget to contact Ms. Jennifer, and she's going to be helping you in getting enrolled in our center. Uh, you can choose to enroll in either Swoosh or 9.09er, and this is actually uh, absolutely free. You don't have to pay anything, a kinetic space for your test preparation, so just contact and get in touch with Kinetics so that you can get enrolled in the centers. Sound check. Can, can I be heard now? Yes. Okay, I have unmuted myself. So let's go back to the questions of the live attendees. Now it's getting interesting because more people are using the comment section. Maybe they want to win the free IELTS Platinum or OED Platinum package. We still have more time. We have less than 30 minutes left. Tag your friends, uh, share the link to anyone whom you think might benefit from this discussion of passing English examinations going to the United States. Let's take a look at the other comments. Fuzia Shama is watching all the way from Kuwait. Good afternoon to you in Kuwait. Neil Ryan Tabinas Caballas, thank you for this info session, Sir Irvin and Sir Brian. You're welcome, Mr. Caballas. Uh, Fuzia Shama, thank you. You're welcome. Miss Melanis of Connetics is watching. She's very helpful. She makes sure that everything is smooth every time we have Facebook Live sessions or there are events. Miss Melanis is always preparing everything. She might not be seen, but she's always behind the scene, always working so hard to ensure that everyone from Connetics can put up a good show. So thank you for what you do, Miss Melanis. Jomari Zapanta, hello, sir. Which examination do you recommend? Is it IDP or British Council? Okay, let me give you a background. I, for one, 
took the examination in both testing centers. I took my academic module with British Council and my general training module with IDP. So Brian right here took two versions of the IELTS, IELTS on paper and IELTS on computer. But if I'm not mistaken, he took both examinations with IDP. Now, we don't want you to think that one testing center offers the easier or more difficult examination because they are not the ones making the test questions and test papers. Imagine they are just distributors. They administer the examination. Which means to say, if you go to IDP, do not be shocked if your friend taking the examination with British Council on that day gets exactly the same material. Because like what we've said, it's not the testing center that makes the tests. What you have to do then is to visit the website of the two testing centers. That's because there are certain cities where only IDP is conducting the exam, and there are also certain locations where only British Council conducts the test. In the event that both of them are conducting the examination in that particular region, what you have, what do you do next? Look at the availability of test dates. Because sometimes IDP goes to one venue two times a month, but for British Council, they might not do that frequently. But there are also certain locations where British Council is conducting the tests more often. So instead of choosing the testing center based on hearsays or misconceptions, fallacies about the exam, it would be best for you to be practical. Number one, check the available test dates. Number two, the locations, which ones are more accessible from you. And from there, you decide whether you go to IDP or British Council. But what is it that 9.09er believes in? Regardless of the testing center, if you are prepared, you will make it. But you cannot just ask uh, fate or destiny to decide on your behalf. If you are not prepared, you are likely to take another English examination. And these exams cost a fortune, 12,000 pesos, or in U.S. dollars, that's approximately 200. We need you to be prepared when you take the examination because it's a huge amount of money that you're going to flush down the drain when you take it and you are not prepared. Let's take a look at the other comments. Amy Abalos, watching from Pasig. Good evening to you, Miss Amy Abalos of Pasig City. You, Monoroa, Connecticut's USA Nursing. I think this is, I have emailed, but no response. Just keep on trying. Sometimes the email enters the spam folder. But like what we've mentioned earlier, we have dealt with people from Connect. Kinetics, from Ms. Tanya Friedman all the way to the other departments, they are very responsive. They make it a point to give us an update within 24 hours. No wonder why our relationship is smooth sailing. We understand that, yes, there are plenty of applicants, but if ever you were not able to receive a response within 24 hours, all you have to do is to send the same email. Or sometimes check the spelling of the email, maybe because there is a wrong uh, letter. That's why they were not able to receive it. Yeah. Reina, are you both nurses too? Here's the interesting tidbit. Sir Brian right here is a master of all trades because Sir Brian is a registered nurse by profession and a registered licensed teacher as well. And Sir Brian also has a master's degree. And Sir Brian is also our IT guy. He developed our website from scratch, our mobile app from scratch. And Sir Brian is also a contractor and interior designer of his very own branch, which is 9.09er Makati. I just want to ask, uh, straight from Sir Brian. Sir Brian, when you uh, took the licensure examination for teachers, you were in top 10, right? You were number? Number six, sir. Okay. Top six nationwide as a licensed teacher when he took the examination. And when he finished his master's degree, what was his uh, general weighted average and the honors or the academic standing? I think I got 1.08, and that's actually the highest honor. Yes, I think so too. I, I don't know a lot of people in my life with an average of 1.08, 1.1, or 1.2. Now, you're going to ask me, am I a nurse? No, I am not a registered nurse by profession, but everyone who knows me perhaps 
they have an idea of my background. I finished a degree in BA Communication Research from the University of the Philippines, Diliman, with a scholastic standing of magna cum laude. I started teaching IELTS some 17 years ago, May of 2006, and now it's 2023. I've been in this business for nearly half of my life, an IELTS teacher for 17 years. I am not a nurse, and I have no plans on... Uh, taking up a nursing course because I'm afraid of blood, unfortunately. <laughs> but I've dealt with nurses every single day in the last 17 years. Okay. Amy Abalos, passing question mark. I, ha I spoke with Miss Shin uh, Malabog earlier. They have plans of reviving Pasig Ortigas Avenue Extension Branch and Antipolo Branch. But watch out. All you have to do is to follow Niner on Facebook. We post new information every day. Latest updates regarding the passers, changes in the exam, and something interesting because Sir Brian and I are going to make a video which we will release in March when this is going to be accepted already. One uh, one subtest retake will be officially implemented this coming March. Oh, so that's interesting. So if in the event that you need to take another examination, you don't have to repeat all four subtests. So I'm sure a lot of people are asking, so how much does this cost? Will this be accepted by CGFNS? Or what about the State Board of Nursing? Can still can this be used to combine with another can this be used to combine with another result? Or can we also apply for remark even if it's just one subtest? All that and more in March. Notice, when you go to 9.09 or Facebook page, we are not about selling all the time. We are always the pioneer in sharing updates. That's, uh, that's why last year when CGFNS announced that USA will accept other English examinations apart from IELTS, we were also one of the very first review centers in the world, for that matter, to conduct a Facebook Live session to clarify the misconceptions and to address the concerns and issues of the candidates. So don't forget to follow Niner Facebook page if you are not uh, if you are not a follower yet. How do you know it's the official account? 9.09er IELTS Review Center with 195,000 followers on Facebook. Now let's move on to the other questions. Carlo Rey Santos, thank you so much. You're welcome. Amy Abalos, thanks for this info. You're welcome. Thank you, Ragnar Reddington, for tagging your friend, Gab Ram. Hello, coming from Jacqueline Lahara Abakan. Hi, Miss Jacqueline. If you have friends whom you think will benefit from this discussion, just tag them. Keep on asking questions because we are here to address the questions for you. Arlene Villanueva, let's do it. That's the spirit. I love it, Miss Arlene. Le Estancia, is there an opportunity for Radtex? FYI, there are a lot of opportunities for Radtex in um, in first world countries, in English speaking countries. But with all due respect to Connetics, I would rather that you message Connetics to clarify if they are sending radiographers to the United States. Because I am sure they primarily help nurses go to the United States. But for uh, radiographers, I think it's best that you email Connetics. Okay, what else do we have right here? Oh, Miss Trixie is watching. We miss you, Miss Trixie, and we hope to see you in our future events. Yara Princess Elgendi, you're always awesome, Sir Brian. Amy Abalos, clap, clap, clap. Reina, wow, you guys are so smart. Well, thank you, and we suppose we have to be credible. We are not bragging, but when people ask, we lay down our credentials. Of course, you don't just entrust your future to literally anyone, right? You choose the best instructors in the market. That's why we're the only IELTS review center that Connetics chose as a partner with non-native English speakers. We know for a fact that some people think that, in, uh, that native speakers must be teaching IELTS, but Connetics knows that even if we are non-native speakers, we were able to get the perfect nine in the examination. No wonder why Connetics chose us to help fellow non-native speakers because we know the struggle better than those who never had to learn the language because that's their first language. Sir Brian's first language is Tagalog. My first language is Visaya. Second language Tagalog. Third language English. But notice that 
in the last uh, 45 minutes of being together, you'll notice that we can freely speak our heart out in English. And talking in English is as natural as breathing for us because we've been doing this for the longest time. Imagine someone teaching in this industry for 17 years already. So that should give you an idea of how old I am as an English <laughs> instructor. So Amy Abalos, thank you, sir. Excited to enroll. Thank you, Sir Irvin and Sir Brian. So for Yara, Princess LGND, just coordinate with Kinetic so that you don't have to pay a single centavo. Because if you are qualified for the sponsorship, all you have to do is to communicate with Miss Jennifer and voila, enjoy IELTS or OET or PTE or TOEFL preparation without paying a single centavo. Liz Tansha, thanks, sir. You're welcome. Now, we have a few minutes left in the discussion, so let's wait for the others to ask questions. But now, I'm going to ask Sir Brian. We've uh, discussed earlier the four criteria. So there's task response, coherence, cohesion, lexical resource, grammatical range, and accuracy. But what about the format? I understand there is an introduction. There is the body. There is a conclusion. Now let's ask Sir Brian, how many paragraphs are recommended for IELTS writing and PTE writing, specifically pertaining to essay writing, and how many sentences are ideal in one paragraph, and what's best for candidates to include in the intro, what they must never forget to write in the conclusion. Okay, let's take it from the expert, the person who got the perfect 9 in IELTS writing and perfect 90 over 90 in PTE writing. Okay. So when it comes to the number of paragraphs that you should be writing in the IELTS and in the PTE, they're quite identical for the reason that you're supposed to show that you are able to demonstrate cohesion, that you're able to paragraph effectively, that you're able to organize your thoughts into separate paragraphs. You should have one introduction paragraph. You should have probably a couple paragraphs in your body, up to three paragraphs maximum. And you should have one paragraph for your conclusion for a grand total of four to five paragraphs. There are some people who actually have the inclination to put everything in just one paragraph in their body. This is not advisable because if you put everything in just a single paragraph, it's not going to show that you know how to organize your thoughts. So when it comes to the number of paragraphs, you should be writing write about four to five paragraphs for 250 words, more or less in the examination or a little more for IELTS and not any less for PTE, not less than 200 words, definitely for PTE. Now, when it comes to the components of your examination, you should have an introduction, you should have the body paragraphs, and most importantly, especially for PTE, you should be writing a conclusion. Because if you don't write the conclusion, the computer will actually probably think that you did not finish your test, so there's no task completion, and that's going to negatively impact your test score for PTE. So introduction, body, and your conclusion. These are the most important things that you should be writing in your essay. When it comes to the introduction, most candidates write something very creative, like a hook, a creative introduction. But I feel, and here at 9.09er, we do not actually advise so that you write something like that because it is actually a waste of time. You spend so much time writing something that is very interesting, that will catch the attention of the reader, but it doesn't actually share anything to your test score because you're not able to answer anything with an introduction that's creative. It might be interesting, but if it's going to take you 10 minutes to write that, that's very inefficient and you should probably spend your time elsewhere. What we suggest is just paraphrase the question or talk about the topic, just discuss the topic very briefly, paraphrase the question, just use other words to mean the same thing, and then launch right away into your argument if your stand is asked in the question. Most of the time in IELTS, your stand or your position will be asked. So if you have questions that are close-ended or you have agree or disagree questions in which you're supposed to write your stand or position early on into your writing, make sure that you write that in your interview introductory paragraph. Probably a couple of sentences will be fine for your intro to a maximum of three if you want to get there, but not anything longer than that. Because if your intro is longer than your body, it's going to show poor cohesion once again. Then if you write your body paragraphs, don't make them too long. 
probably one argument, one reason, and one example sentence will be absolutely fine. So that's just a total of three sentences per paragraph. Don't make it too lengthy and write five, six, ten sentences in one paragraph. It's going to take up too much space. And at the same time, it will be too lengthy and might not actually be sensible. So make sure that you write, write about three sentences per paragraph only for the body. And for your conclusion, just a couple will do. Maybe in the conclusion, you can just summarize your key points in the body and reiterate your stand or just emphasize your position once again. And that's it. Your conclusion should not contain any new ideas. Do not put anything new there because if you're adding an additional idea there, it's going to show that you're not yet done. It's like you're chasing after your thoughts and you still want to put something there that you have not included in your body. So it will kind of look like an extension of your body and not so much a conclusion, which is summative. Your conclusion should have a tone that it's the end. It should probably show that the essay has ended. It has been concluded. All loose ends have been tied together. So that's how you write your conclusion at the end of your essay. Make sure that you write the conclusion. If it's absent, then examiners or the computer will think that you're not done with your essay. So these are some reminders for your IELTS and your uh, PTE writing. But let me just uh, very briefly talk about the challenges that you might encounter in these tests very quickly before we end the show. In IELTS, probably the challenge is you have to make sure that you have good answers because unlike in speaking, in which you could probably just talk about anything and um, just make sure that you answer the questions, even if your answers are not really life-changing or anything, your IELTS writing is different in the sense that you need to make sure that your response hits the question right to the head and it makes an impactful effect or communicative effect to your examiners. It should communicate the message very clearly and it should be an informed response for you to get a good score. It is also the same for the Pearson test of English. So it is very important for you to research on the topics that usually come out in these, in these exams. And thankfully, we have a compilation of questions here at 909 or that have come out before and they still come out today. So one of those might be your actual question in the real examination because they get recycled. Moreover, it is also very important that you're able to finish your examination on time. And one of the primary difficulties of the PTE, which I need to emphasize here or highlight, is that it's not easy because it is actually going to require that you finish the test in just 20 minutes, as opposed mm -hmm. to IELTS in which you have 40 minutes and PTE you only have 20 minutes to write your 200 to 300 word essay. And that's half the time that you have for the IELTS. Therefore, it is actually more difficult in terms of the timing or in terms of the time limit that you have for the examinations. Make sure that you're able to accomplish this test on time. And uh, if you're not able to finish your examination within 20 minutes for PTE and 40 minutes for IELTS, then do not attempt to take the examination because I need to tell you, statistics would show that at least one-fifth or 20% of the test takers of IELTS do not finish their IELTS writing. And in the PTE, there are also plenty of candidates who do not get to accomplish the task simply because they didn't have enough time to accomplish it. So uh, there, uh, I've just talked about those pointers and guidelines for your two exams. Thank you for the knowledge, Sir Brian. That's very informative, short, and sweet. Now, before we choose the lucky winner for tonight's uh, IELTS or Platinum, uh, IELTS or OET Platinum, we have one more question, and it's from Jumel Trinidad Carvajal. Sir Irvin and Sir Brian, good evening. I just want to know if it's true that if you fail one module of OET, then you can just take that particular module in your next exam. Yes, this is true, but for other countries, not yeah. the United States of America. Sure. If you're going to the United States, you have to pass all the four subtests in one sitting if you mm -hmm. choose OET. Yeah. That's why. Let's go back to our argument earlier. We are not saying that you don't take OET in going to America because for sure OET is accepted in the United States. It's just that it might be more practical for you to consider cheaper English examinations that cost only around 200 US dollars like IELTS and PTE 
because for IELTS, you don't need to get a specific band in listening, reading, and writing. Plus, you can combine two results. For PTE, what you need is a 55 overall and 50 per subtest. Whereas in OET, it has to be a 300 in listening, reading, and writing, and 350 in speaking. Now, always remember that our disclaimer is we're always accurate as of recording. Today is January 30. We'll never know if by next month there will be changes or by next quarter. So always make sure to follow 9.09er on YouTube and TikTok because from time to time, we upload videos talking not just about IELTS, OET, PTE, and TOEFL, but recent changes, whatever policy changes there are in the countries that require English examinations, namely US, UK, Ireland, Canada, Australia, New Zealand. You will notice that when you visit our TikTok account or YouTube channel, 9.09er does not sell all the time. In fact, every Monday, we upload a new video on YouTube. And just earlier, we uploaded a new video discussing useful phrasal verbs that you can use in acing various English examinations. So without further ado, Let's identify the lucky winner for tonight. Earlier, more than 60 live viewers. But consistently, there's... Let's take a look. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have actually quite a few who asked questions and participated in the discussion. Okay. Perhaps... Our winner for tonight is one of the first Filipinos who used the comments section. And congratulations to Miss Reina. Okay, please message me directly on Facebook. Let us know if you want IELTS Platinum Package or OET Platinum Package. Before we end, we'd like to thank Kinetics for this opportunity for us to share our knowledge to your viewers and subscribers worldwide. If you want more of us, in four weeks' time, by the fourth Monday of February, 9.09, we'll talk about IELTS reading and PTE reading. Because like what I've said, these are the two subtests that are assigned to 9.09er. But we want you to maximize the free info sessions brought about by Kinetics College. So first and third Monday of the month, it's NCLEX, free lessons. Second and fourth Monday of the month, free lessons on various English exams, namely IELTS, OET, PTE, and TOEFL. So mark your calendars. That's 8 p.m. Philippine time every Monday of the week. Once again, this is Sir Irvin of 9.09er, and with me is Sir Brian. We'd like to thank Miss Alanis, Miss Tanya, Miss Lashana, Miss Jennifer, everyone that we're working with in Kinetics. Also, if ever you have not jump started your application to the United States, don't forget it's cusa.link slash niner. We'll see you in four weeks. And we hope that whatever info we discussed in the last 60 minutes will help you decide which English examination is ideal for you and ultimately help you get the required band score. Once again, good night from the Philippines and we'll see you in our next video. Bye for now.